This is the start of a new unit on fractions and decimals. The first portion of our unit is going to focus solely on fractions. Okay, and lesson one for our new unit is called fractions of a whole. Now this lesson is going to focus on vocabulary and uh, ideas or concepts of fractions, mostly going to be review, but let's go through it together so we can be all on the same page. So first things first, you need to know that a fraction is a number. Now, particularly, most of the fractions we are going to be um, focusing on will be numbers that are smaller than the number one or one whole. So, um, to start off, we're going to do a short activity. Shouldn't take you very long, but what you're going to need is three colors of either pencil crayon or crayon. And what you need to do is make a design on this quilt right here. So you need to color in each square fully with one color. And, but you can do it in whatever pattern you want, but you need at least three colors. So if you want more, you can have more. Then what you'll do is you'll use fractions to, just, to describe the colors on your quilt. Okay, so uh, pause the video, take a moment right now to complete this activity. Once you have finished, then please play the video again. Okay, so now that you have finished your um, quilt, this is one that I made quickly on the computer here. And so I've used three colors. I have used, I've used teal and purple and green. Okay, so what I need to do first is, because I need to use fractions to describe my quilt. So first of all, for each one of the colors, whoops. I need to figure out what the bottom number is going to be, which is called the denominator. Um, and so what, how I would do that is count up all of the squares. Now to do this a quick way, because I can see that there are columns and rows of squares, I'm just gonna count up the outer edge and multiply by, by each other. So on this edge, I've got one, two, three, four, five squares. And atop, on the top, I've got one, two, three, four, five squares. So if I go 5 times 5, I'll get 25. Now if you don't believe me that there are 25 squares, then pause the video and count. So out of a total of 25 squares, how many are teal? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 teal squares. Now purple is going to have the same bottom number because it's the same quilt we're talking about. So out of a whole quilt of 25 squares, how many are purple? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them are purple. And lastly, we have green. So again, out of a total of 25 uh, squares, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another eight squares. Okay, and now because I've done all of the colors, if I add 8 plus 9 plus 8, or 9 plus 8 plus 8, whatever, um, I should get the number 25. So 8 plus 9 here is 17, plus another 8 is 25. So I know that I've done this correctly. Now yours could look completely different, but what you definitely need to have in your answers is um, a fraction for each color and the denominator, the bottom number for each one, needs to be 25 for you as well. Okay? So, uh, let's look at the connect. So let's look at some of the things that you probably learned last year, but maybe forget. So the first thing is, um, question one here, whoops, is what are fractions? So what are those anyways? Uh, fractions name equal parts of a whole. So they just tell me out of this whole thing, it tells me how many pieces are in the whole and how many are um, 
either shaded or not shaded. Okay, so on the first example here with the blue, um, we've got a pentagon with five edges and it's cut in half perfectly. So each side is exactly the same. And we would say that this has two equal parts, our halves. So if I were to write this fraction in words, I would write uh, one half. Okay, it's showing halves right there. And this particular one is one half. Or I could write one over two like this. And I would also say it as one half. Okay, so that's one example of um, equal parts of a whole. Next one we've got here. Um, I've got four pieces in total. So that means that I have fourths. Fourths, notice the TH at the end, THS. And then two of them are shaded. So if I have fourths and two are shaded, then I have two fourths. Now I can write it as two over four here. And again, I would say this as two fourths as well. Now at the end here, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five equal parts, and they are called fifths. Notice there's a TH at the end of this one as well. That's going to happen at most numbers. So um, since all of these are shaded, then I could say five fifths are shaded. And at the bottom here, we've got a larger one. There are 10 pieces here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so 10 equal parts, those are tenths. Notice the THS at the end. This vocabulary is going to stay the same throughout all fractions, and it will also carry over into decimals. So since I have four yellow ones shaded here, this means that I have four tenths. See the pattern here? The number that is shaded is, a, is how you normally would say a number, like one, two, five, or four. And the total number is the one that gets the THS added onto it. So tenths, fifths, fourths, um, except for this one wouldn't be tooths. <laughs> this one would be halves over here for two. But other than that, normally it's going to be a THS. Okay. So moving on to the back of the page, we've got parts of fractions now. So what are the names of the parts of a fraction? I mentioned one of the parts earlier, and that was a denominator. Now, on the top here, we've got a numerator. Numerator. Think number. Number of parts shaded or number of parts in the whole number. Numerator. Similar in the structure for the word. So what a numerator is, is it's always on the top and it tells how many pieces you have from the whole. So in our picture here, one piece is orange. So that's why our numerator in this example is a one because this is colored. Now on the bottom is called a denominator, denominator. Um, and it tells you how many total pieces are in the whole. Okay, so the total pieces, not the rest of the pieces, the total pieces. So some of us get tricked and we go one, two, three. We forget to include the shaded as well for four. So total on the bottom, shaded, or it could be just the not shaded on the top, depending on what the question asks. Now, um, the type of fraction that we're going to be focus on, focusing on this year is called proper fractions. And proper fractions are just fractions that represent an amount less than one whole. There are fractions that represent more than one whole. Well, we'll look at that in, in the future grades. So what we focus on, on are proper fractions. And an example of that is what we saw on the other side, 4 tenths. Okay? Um, and then we'll also look a little bit at um, one whole, fractions that represent one whole. And 5 fifths would be an example. 
Any number that has the same number on the top and bottom would represent one whole because you have the same number um, that are shaded as how many there are of the total. All right. And so what you need to do now is do the practice. So we've got one, two, three questions. Part, or question two has two parts. But what you need to do is um, answer the questions on your own while the video is paused. And then once you have finished, play the video again just to make sure that you've got the right answers and you're on the right track. So pause the video now and have your try at each of these questions. Okay, so now that you're finished, um, let's go through the practice together. So, um, the first one says show three sevenths by drawing tiles. So, I could draw a long strip because seven is an odd number and won't go into a rectangle nicely for me. So, there's one, two, three, four, five six, seven. And what I need to do is show three. So I would color in three of these. Okay, and so I have seven total and three are colored in. Yours may have looked a little bit different as far as what the picture looks like, but yours should have three colored and seven in total. So four not colored. Okay, and so number two, you had to answer the following using both words and numerals. Uh, what fraction of the pizza has been eaten is the first question. So we let's sit, see how many pieces are in total. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six in total and one has been eaten. So in words, I would write one, six. My X combined into my dot for my I there. There. Whoops, not an S. One six. There's no S when it's out of one or when there's only one. So one sixth or one over six like this. You could say it as one sixth. Now the second one says what fraction of the pizza has not been eaten? So that's the rest. So that would be five. Six. Notice how there is now an S at the end because I have more than one right here. And that would look like this, 5 over 6. Okay, and then the last one, does this fraction show one third? How do you know? The answer is no, it does not. And why I know is because these are not equal sized parts. Okay, so in order to, for a fraction to be a fraction, each of the parts needs to be the same size. So if I wanted a square to be divided into three equal parts, I would draw more like strips like this and then shade one part. Now that shows one third because each of these are the same size. But this one, no, it, it does not show one third. Okay. So your assignment then is on page 176 to 1 to 77. It's number 2 to 7 and it's also 9 and 9 I have a handout for you. So you'll need to do that on there. 